All right, so th this video is going to show how to launch a rocket off the surface of a planet into space. And when it gets to space, it's going to stop and just, just deploy some satellite. And uh, the, main, the main thing that I like to get into is kind of my thought process with this, um, which allows you to make something that has like a step-by-step -step process you know a lot of a lot of the stuff that automatons or a lot of the stuff that you can kind of make autonomously in space engineers has a has kind of a sequence to it and i'm hoping to kind of break down that sequence into feasible steps so let's start with step one we want to launch a rocket up into space the best way to do that is to take one of these guys take one of these guys and then take one of these guys, and since I'm building in creative mode, the tank already has some fuel in it. And all we're gonna do is come here, we're gonna go to the large hydrogen thruster, we're gonna turn it off, we're gonna turn the thrust override all the way up, and then we're gonna turn it on. So that's how you launch. But we're gonna, we're gonna do that a little bit differently. We're going to do that a little bit differently, so let's try that again. So we're going to put down a thruster, we're going to put down a tank, put down a battery, and I'm going to preemptively shut this off. So I turned the I turned the thruster off, I'm going to turn it back up, uh, I'm going to turn the thrust override back up, and it doesn't have to be at max. This is a ridiculous amount of thrust um, for this small, uh, for this relatively lightweight craft. Um, we're going to keep that off, we're going to add a... We're going to add a timer block. We'll use the autom automaton timer block. And actually, I'm going to color stuff white. All right, so now that we have a timer block, we can come here and we can say, I like to remove the word automaton from it. So it's just timer block. We're going to call this um, launch countdown. We're going to have a delay of 10 seconds and we're going to set up actions. We're going to find the large hydrogen thruster that we know is, um, we, there's only one. And we're going to say, turn it on. So all I need to do is hit start, and it will count down from 10 seconds and trigger whatever is in, whatever is in this action, whatever is in this bar. In this case, it will toggle the, the engine on. So, but instead of, instead of hitting start here, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to take a uh, button, something like this. I'm going to go to the screen, and just so it, uh, just so we can tell what it does, I'm going to go to the content, change it to text and images. I'm going to edit text. I'm going to say launch countdown. And you can kind of see, you can set this in your settings, by the way. You can make your, um, your UI see-through, which makes it way easier to be able to see what you're working on. Change your font size, and then align it to the center. Oh, we oh I did it the wrong one. Something like that. Launch countdown. And if I go to this button, um, the first time I press it after building it fresh, it's just going to take me to a menu of all the blocks that are in this grid. Now I could do one of two things. I could just use this button to turn on the industrial large hydrogen thruster. I can use the button to turn on the main thruster. But later on, I'm going to want to turn on a bunch of things at the same time, or even off at the same time. And if you look down here, you only have one slot for this button. So you can only do one thing. However, the timer blocks can do many things at once. So it's better to use a button to engage a timer block and then have the timer block do all the things that you need to do. So in this case, it's only one thing, but the timer block does have uh, a timer functionality built into it anyway, so even if you want to trigger one thing, you can do it after a certain period of time. So I'm going to drag the timer block and make sure I have the right one, the launch countdown. I only have one, so I'm going to drag that down here. And if I do trigger now, it's just going to launch. There won't be any time delay. But if I hit start, it will utilize the time delay. Um, so I've just engaged... All right, I've just set this to be um, start for the timer block. Okay. So let's see what happens if I press this button. I just pressed it. 
and you can see on here it kind of flashes it flashes every second once it gets down to 10 or down to zero there we go it launches all right so that's step one i really should be copying that <laughs> okay so step one is launching it step two is going to be stopping it and how do you know when to stop it all right so let's start over again we're going to build that i'm going to build, build the main thruster i'm going to build a hydrogen tank um i'm going to do something a little bit different this time i'm just going to extend it up i'm going to put a, a smaller thruster on top i'm going to put a battery on it and this time we're going to put one for the count these are timer blocks we're going to put one for the launch and then we're going to put we're going to make this simple so we're just going to put one for the stop all right and we're going to put a button down for the initial launch um why is it moving oh we have to turn off this thruster oh wrong one that one this one can stay on all right so the the big one remember we're going to put its thrust all the way up and we have three timer blocks i oh, sorry we have two timer blocks we're going to rename them timer block one is going to be launch countdown timer block two will be uh slow down no we'll just call it stop we're just going to call it stop timer block two you know as everyone knows rockets just stop in space all right so then just to make this easy i'm just gonna say down or i'm just gonna say main thruster no i'm gonna say thruster main i'm gonna call this one thruster stop and i am gonna put more thrusters on this just to help balance it out all right so Let's get back in here. So we have the timer block one launch countdown. This time I'll make sure I copy this before we set it off. We're gonna set up actions. We're gonna go take the the main thruster and we're going to toggle it on. And let's just make sure that the main thruster has the thrust override set to the max. It's off. That's good. That's what we want. The button panel Again, we want to change this to text. Edit the text to say launch countdown. We're going to align it to the center. We're going to make it big. And most importantly, set up actions. And then over here, we want the button to start the start the countdown for launch. All right. Let me just make sure. Okay, so if you hover over it, you can see timer block launch countdown start um, and that's it but what I'm gonna do is copy this I learned my lesson last time and this one we're gonna launch oh we're not gonna launch it yet hang on we have to do one more thing so the second timer block we're going to use for stopping it so what we're gonna do for actions is we're going to get the main thruster we're going to turn that off and when we turn that off we don't need to do anything else because actually the the ship's going to stop itself because it ha because there's a thruster pointing in the upwards direction and if i have it set for oh there's no there's no cockpit on this so hmm that's a good question i'm going to do an experiment real quick because Right now there's no there's no controller of this ship. There's nothing controlling it. Um, there's no cockpit, there's no uh, uh, remote control. So what I need to check is to see if the um, what's it called dampeners. So if, if I'm if I'm flying my, my person and I turn dampeners off, it, it just it'll just keep going. Um, but if I have dampeners on, it will it will always bring me to a stop. So 
There's no way to set the dampeners on this, uh, cause there's no, there's no, like, cockpit or anything. Um, but I'm curious to know, if I come over here, we're gonna go to the, um, the main thruster. We're gonna turn the thrust override all the way off, and I'm gonna copy this. Okay, so it does maintain, it, it does, oh, it, it constantly tries to reach a zero velocity, even without a controller on it. So that's good. All right, so then, then yeah, that's all we need to do in terms of the timer blocks. The second timer block stops it, and, and in order to stop it, it just turns the main thruster off, which will make it so that the this thruster will eventually stop it. But we're missing one thing. How does it know when to stop? Well, we have a, we have an event controller and the event controller makes it so that we can the event controller makes it so that we can wait for an event a particular event and then trigger something based off that so if we come over here we're going to say natural gravity changed this is the p gravity and we're going to say equal or less than zero so once the gravity is equal to zero or less than zero, which it can't be, so it just once it's equals zero, it's going to do something. And what we want it to do is trigger timer block two. We're just gonna say trigger now. We don't wanna wait 10 seconds. We just wanna trigger now. Cause we want to stop it as soon as it exits the planet's gravity. One thing to note about event controllers, you'll see that there's two there's two spots in its bar and its uh, toolbar. The first spot will engage whatever whatever block is there, whatever you have set for that that spot once the condition once this condition is met. So equal or less than zero it will do this thing here. Once the condition is not met, it will do this thing here. And we can kind of show that next time we, uh, we'll show that, I'll show that next time, next thing we build. All right, so anyway, now that we have this set up, and we'll actually just name this too, event controller entered space. Okay, so we rename that when natural gravity is equal or less than zero, we will trigger the timer block for stopping. All right, and we can test this, but before we test it, I'm going to make sure that I... Main thruster, turn it off, thrust override, max, and we're gonna copy this. And I'm gonna press Control Z, which turns my dampeners um, onto the ship. And I'm gonna hit the launch. So we're gonna we're gonna go for a ride. There it goes. It's launched. And I can just kind of follow it. And I'll speed this part up so we don't have to wait for it. Okay, so our P gravity is at 0 0.07, and we are getting very close to leaving. We're getting very close to um, leaving the gravity. So P gravity will go down to 0 0.05, and then just like snap to zero. So as soon as we see, um, as soon as as we see it go to 0 0.5, then we know 
zero is right around the corner. All right, so it's at point zero 0.05, so I'm just gonna position myself just to kind of show you what will happen. Okay, zero, and there we go. The main thruster stopped, and the and you can see my speed immediately drop down to zero, so that means you know we're actually at zero, and we're in uh, zero gravity. So now we can look around and we can see we've got asteroids around us. All right, so that's how you get a rocket up here. I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm going to bring myself back down here. All right, so I think that performed really well. As soon as we left gravity, um, the main thruster turned off, which then uh, allowed this, basically allowed the ship to slow down by itself. Anyways, all right, so now now that we have a ship that's capable of launching, getting in space, and stopping all, all on its own, we want to do one more thing, which is build some sort of satellite that's going to detach from this once it's up there. All right, so I'm going to make this pretty simple. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have a connector that will separate once it gets um, once it gets up there and this is gonna look a little goofy but it's whatever all right so whatever is on is attached to this connector is going to be the satellite so I'll have a battery with a I'll have a battery with a solar panel yeah this is gonna this is gonna look really goofy and maybe a, I'll use one of these new beacons. So that's all, just something that bloops and bloops. Um, and if we go to this beacon, I can just say it's broadcast radius is just some ridiculous, like, I don't know if that's how you spell satellite, but that's how I spelled satellite. I'm just gonna call this satellite. So I forget if the beacon Oh, I have this turned off. Okay, it's showing the exclamation point, so it's it's telling me the uh, the name of the ship. Sorry, the name of the rocket ship, and the 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 beacon. I've just renamed it to say satellite, with an exclamation point. So you will just see it say satellite. All right. Um, I'm not going to put anything else on there. I will change the name of this connector to be uh, Rocket so that, um, well, you'll see. So the next thing I need to do, all right, so how do we then um, know, how do we know when to disconnect this? Um, if we use the existing timer block, that slows down the uh, slows down the ship, and use that to disconnect this. Then what will happen is the this ship will slow down, but this will just keep going. Um, that would be funny, but that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to release this when the ship has been uh, when, when when everything's like come to a complete stop. So we're going to add one more event controller. And this one's going to tell us when we're at a complete stop. So we're going to call it complete stop. Uh, the event is going to be the event is going to be grid speed changed, and we're going to say equal or less than zero. So once we're at zero, this should engage. Um, I don't have a timer block set up for it yet, so let's set up the timer block. Put that up here. We're gonna call this um, timer block three release satellite setup actions. We're gonna find the connector that we named rocket, and we're going to say unlock. Um, now, if you have any experience with connectors, you'll know that. Once you unlock, uh, a short delay happens, and then it will kind of remagnetize to 
uh, to the other connector. So what we want to do is we want to turn the connector off as well. That prevents it from remagnetizing if we don't uh, if we don't move away fast enough. So that's a nice trick. You unlock and then you toggle it off really quick. Um, the order that things happen in this toolbar, it's sort of unknown, but what I've noticed is that it tends to happen from left to right. So I haven't tested this, but I don't know if you can like turn a connector off and then un unlock it. I don't know if you can do that. I do know that if you do it in this order, it will unlock it and then turn it off, which is exactly what we want. Um, let's not get any more complicated than that. All right, you're getting fussy. So now there's one weird thing with this is that I'm going to go up to space. It's going to start slowing down. It's going to come to a complete stop and then it's going to, it's going to undock this satellite and then it's just going to sit there. So that's not very exciting. So what we want to do is actually maybe send the send the ship back home. Um, I don't really feel like testing this again, so I'm going to do that now. So once this reaches zero, this is going to tell the timer block to... Uh, I haven't set that up yet. Complete stop. Oops, not wrong one. We're going to set up actions. We're going to go timer block three, release satellite. We're going to say... We're going to say start. Oh, no. Oh, it's going to fall off. Oh, it didn't. It caught it. Wait, what happened? <laughs> okay, so that's what could happen if you're, or if you're an idiot like me. Um, all right, so the issue with this is the issue with this is that if we're just sitting down here and we say when the, when the speed is less than or equal to zero then it's going to um, it's going to always be the case before I take off right so what we need to do is first of all first off I need to um, fix this situation I'm gonna turn this Wait. Yeah, this is just going to keep happening. So I'm going to turn this block off so that we don't... Um, let's do this. So let's go to Event Controller, Complete Stop. We're going to turn that off so it's not freaking out. Why? What are you doing? You know what I should do? I, I should really, um, I should really do this. So I'm gonna put a magnet up play here. I'm gonna see if I can get the thruster to get it to lock. Almost. There we go. Alright. So the other thing is we want this launch countdown timer block to do one more thing. We're going to say magnetic plate unlock. And that's all. And what's going on with this? So I want to take a look at this. So if I turn this on Okay, so this is why it didn't cause an issue with my testing. Earlier I had the... Um, earlier I had this uh, connected, with a, connected with a magnetic plate. And the way that the, func the event controllers work is the, the speed has to change. And so if it's just mounted to a fixed grid, then the speed is never changing. So even though it's zero, even though the speed is zero, it never 
changed to zero. Does that make sense? So over here, I didn't have the, um, I didn't have it locked to a grid. So it was kind of like wobbling side to side. It was kind of changing between like, it was kind of changing between like zero and 0 0.01 and whatever. So it's changing and then it's going to go back to zero and then it's going to trigger that block and then that block's going to trigger the timer block and then that timer block's going to drop the, uh, going to drop the, uh, the satellite. Um, so that's why that happened. And there's a way to get around that, which is, in fact, I'm going to do it. I know this is making this more complicated, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to say this, um, event controller that's designed for a complete stop, I'm going to turn that off. And in fact, we, we know it works, so I don't, we don't need to test it. Um, so that's off. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say, um, toggle block on and it's still it's still triggering so I'm just gonna let it do its thing okay now it's done all right so we know that works I'm gonna come back over here I'm gonna turn that block on and then switch it so it's on um, and we shouldn't have any more issues so uh, the one last thing I need to do is come over here and say no not that one I need to go my my timer block for not that one for launch so when I launch actually you know what that's that's a good one so up here this is my timer block that that um, begins the stopping procedure so that's a good spot for me to turn on my uh, my event controller I'm going to toggle that on. So if if you're not, if you don't understand what I just did, I basically made it so that the timer block that begins an action when we come to a complete stop isn't enabled until we start the procedure for slowing down. So we're going to get into space. This timer block's going to say, "Hey, we're at we're in space. There's no gravity. Trigger this timer block." And this timer block is going to say, okay, turn off the thruster, start slowing down, and turn on this, this event controller. So now this event controller can start functioning and is going to just wait until we hit a speed of zero. When it hits a speed of zero, it's going to turn this timer block to start, which will do a countdown, which will then release this satellite after 10 seconds. Wow, that's a lot. Um, if you're following, good job. Because this is this gets complicated quick. Alright. So there's one last thing that I want to do. And what I want to do is I want to make this... Um, I want to make this system return back to Earth. Um, because it's no use for us up there. And if we're launching a satellite then we might as well just like kind of keep it attached to it if we're going to keep it up there but we're not we're going to send it back to earth so once we release this satellite we then want to count down maybe 10 seconds and then turn on this thruster we want to override this one so it just starts pushing the robot uh, pushing the the rocket back to earth so we need one more timer block. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put that over here. This timer block is going to be called Return to Planet. I'm going to keep it on 10 seconds. Um, I need to see if... Which one is this? No, that's the wrong one. Oh, we changed it. Thruster stop. Okay, that's the right thruster. So thruster stop isn't exactly the right word. We should be calling it thruster forward or up or something. But it doesn't matter. We're going to come back to our our timer block. Let's rename it. And we're going to set up actions. We're going to find thruster stop. 
and we're gonna say we're gonna say increased thrust override question is whether that's going to be good enough I think just one so one of the issues with this is you can only do like one thrust override and actually let's I'll kind of show you what I mean no I can't without adding a cockpit to this I don't really want to add a cockpit to this so I'm not going to get into it but basically if I were to uh, press a button that increases thrust override like the increase and decrease it's kind of like an arbitrary amount so I'm going to increase thrust override by some amount hopefully it's enough where it just starts pushing the rocket in one direction it's not really that heavy of a rocket so it's going to start increasing it's in space so it's fine and um, as a bonus it's going to enter the planet's gravity like really f pretty quickly so the gravity is going to help it uh, increase in speed so then we want one more timer block because we're going to need a we're going to need a parachute and the parachute is going to have to be enabled after it starts its descent it can't it can't be enabled before if it's enabled the whole time then the parachute's going to come out as it's launching in space so let's get one more timer block all right and this one's going to be called timer block 5 we're, ba we're just going to call it enable parachute all right so we don't have the parachute yet so let's get it we're going to put two parachutes because I don't know how many parachutes are needed and we can do shift F10 we can find canvas and I'm I don't know how much I need, so I'm just going to do spawn and target container. So if I go in here, it's going to show that there's five canvases in here, which is, I think, the max that this can hold. Yeah, 40 out of 40. So I think five canvases is what a parachute, a large grid parachute hatch needs to have a parachute. I think I learned the hard, that the hard way once. Um, so five canvases, and then we can come over here. Do the same. Spawn into targeted container. And there we go. So, um, let's find our parachute hatches. First off, we want to turn them off. We want to say auto deploy. And we're going to deploy them at a height of 200 meters. Okay, so they're off. And we need one more. Oh, let's. I guess we're kind of working our way backwards right now. So this is the enable parachutes. So we're going to say setup actions. Um, parachute hatch one. We're going to turn you on. Parachute hatch two. We're going to turn you on. And that's all that needs to happen there. This timer block, which is return to planet. We already did this, so that's just going to increase the thrust override. Okay, so that's another thing we do. We, we need to do. We need to. We need to decrease the thrust override for that, because we don't want. We don't want to continue thrusting downward if we're about to deploy parachutes. Once we're in the planet's gravity, gravity will very quickly um, pull it towards the planet. So, we are missing something we're missing the okay so over here this is the release satellite um, and if you remember it's going to take 10 seconds to do that so it, it, as soon as once we once the ship comes to a complete stop it's going to start this countdown timer so then 10 seconds later it's going to release the it's going to release the satellite and then what we want to do is when it releases the satellite we want to trigger this timer block return to planet uh, I should have numbered that so the timer block return to planet and we're gonna do start because we want that to have its own 
10 second delay. So that triggers the, that starts the timer block. So just to recap, just to recap, we have this event controller when, uh, when it is enabled, which is currently disabled right now. Once it's enabled, it will wait for the ship to reach a complete stop. Once it reaches a complete stop, it's going to tell this timer block to start. It's going to count down from 10 seconds. Once it reaches zero, it's going to disable this connector. It's going to disconnect and then turn it off. And then it's going to enable, it's going to start this timer block. This timer block it is going to turn on this thruster that will push it back towards the planet. And then we need one more event controller. Uh, this is getting... <laughs> I'm going to put the event controller right here. And this event controller is going to be back in in gravity and we're going to say well first off we're going to turn this off because we're going to do the trick we did before uh, where we enabled the timer block uh, prior to needing it I guess is the best way of putting it because we don't want it to we don't want it to go off uh, prematurely and we want to go to gravity natural gravity changed and we're gonna say we're gonna say equal or greater than some like point 0.1 so once it reaches point 0.1 it will trigger the the timer block for enable parachute and we're gonna do trigger now because we don't want that to delay Wow, okay, that's a lot. And we still need to figure out when to turn on this timer block. We should do that with, sorry, we need to figure out when to turn on this final um, event controller and we should do it over here for, no, not enable parachutes because this turns on enable parachutes. We have to do it on this previous one. We're gonna say the event controller for back in gravity is going to toggle on. Wow. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, so what we have now is after 10 seconds, 10 seconds after this connector disconnects, it will turn on this thruster. It'll start moving the ship back towards the planet. And once it is in planetary gravity, this will trigger the thruster to, to... I'm just making sure I have... Okay, the enable parachute timer block decrease thrust override. That's what we want. Enable parachutes. And, uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um... So what do you think? Are we ready to launch? I think so. Alright, I'm going to copy this. Well, before I copy it, I'm going to build a little thing. I can't get it that close. Okay, that's fine. Maybe we can... Okay. <laughs> that was lucky. Alright. So... Because it's at a tilt, it's going to go up and then it's going to come down. And it's, it's probably going to land over somewhere over here, but I think we're ready to try it. Um, I'm going to hit the launch sequence. Actually, this is kind of funny. It's kind of like a coming over. We're going to hit launch countdown start. And I'm going to hit control Z, which will follow this. Wait. Wait. 
I'll catch up to it. There we go. Okay, now we're attached. Oh, we are really far from... <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess it had a little bit of tilt to it. That's okay. We'll be able to find it. In fact, it's a little more realistic that it has a little bit of a tilt to it. But, anyways, uh, we are at 0.35G. I will return once we get close to, um, to 0.5. I'm going to do one thing, which is add a uh, gyro to this, because I'm not really going, I guess I'm kind of going away from the planet, but Adjusted slightly just so I'm going away. A little better. Okay, we're at 0.05p gravity. So any second now we should see. Um, and you can watch my speed on the bottom left and the p-gravity in the bottom right. So as soon as it hits zero, uh, okay, now we're slowing down. Oh, and we saw that we see the uh, event controller turn on, and then we're going to, uh, s we're going to be waiting about 10 seconds. Okay, the event controller turned blue, which indicated that it was, uh, going to be, it indicated that it's, things okay then we just unlocked over here and then that's unlocked okay and then uh, 10 seconds is gonna go by and then it should enable a thrust override on this oh there it goes it's barely thrusting down but <laughs> okay see a satellite and that's good for 500,000 meters I think we saw so like 500 kilometers and we are we are 40 kilometers from our base, so, um, yeah, we should be able to see that. And we are now back in P-gravity, and, um, you can see our speed is increasing. And so, like I said, we're going to be waiting until we get to, I'm going to be waiting until we get to, like, 0.1G, I think I said, uh, which will then, um, disable the, the thrust override on this and it will enable the the parachute hatches so and you can see our speed is like almost maxed out already and uh, you know this is without in the unlimited speed mod this is all um vanilla space engineers so there's nothing um there's no mods going on so in fact this this technique works well for like if you have xbox or playstation you can uh you can do this on console even so P gravity is at seven, and it doesn't feel like it, but we are actually traveling towards the ground. You can see our, oh, I guess you can see the planet approaching you slightly, but yeah, if you look at the numbers, you can see that we are in fact approaching the ground. And as soon as we hit 0.1 P gravity, then we should, I don't know if it's this one, I forget which one it is. It's this one. Okay, yep, just in time, 0.1 disables that and enables the parachute hatches so now all we have to do is just cruise back to the ground and hope that the parachutes work and if we look up we can see that 11 kilometers away we have placed a satellite in space uh, with nothing but 
all we did was we pressed a button on this. We said boop, and this went up here, placed it there, and now it's on its way back. And we just have to hope that we did it right. We have to hope that two parachutes is enough to slow this thing down. I think it will be. I think it will be. Anyway, this is going to take a while to reach the ground, so I'm going to... Um, we're going to chill here and just watch it happen. Okay, our peak gravity is 0.75 and rapidly, um, rapidly increasing. I don't know what our height is, um, but we are approaching the ground pretty fast. So I think at a certain point, we're going to be deploying these parachutes. And I hope it's soon because the ground is approaching fast. I think we set it for 200 meters, which now that I think about it, may not be enough. Come on, parachutes. Oh. We're getting so close, I can see the ground. This might be bad. This might end bad. It's gonna end bad. Or it's gonna end bad. This is gonna end bad. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so that's 200 meters. <laughs> and oh my god, it slowed it down to a complete stop. Oh. Oh, look at it. I don't know why it's doing that. Why is it doing that? I'm not sure why it's doing that, but it is, uh... What is it doing? What's gonna happen? Is it falling? I can't tell. Let's get in its shadow. I can't tell if it's falling or if it's... Oh, it's hovering! Oh, because we turned that off. Okay, so it is actually, um, yeah, it's, it's trying, it's trying to hover on this one engine because we shut this one off and there's nothing pointing that direction, so it can't hover, so it's basically just, that's okay. I feel like we should just, I don't know how to resolve this, because if I turn that thruster off right now, it will, uh, if I turn the thruster off right now, it, it, it may, it may do bad things because it's going to swing down. Um, I think the parachutes are, I don't actually know how it works. I think that maybe the parachutes will move upwards. I am, I am slowly going down, I think. There we go. Oh. And the parachute's gonna make it so it doesn't, uh... <laughs> Here we go. Touchdown. Hey, that's pretty impressive. That's actually the first time I've sent something up into space and then, uh, and then had it come down fully intact wow well anyway if you followed along this far congratulations because this is this was actually a, a more complicated build than i thought it would be and you know we have some other bugs to work out for example um yeah release satellite is going to continue return to planet okay so this could be an issue if it comes back to earth and and we haven't turned this timer block off then what's going to happen is going to it's going to drop down on the ground 
it's going to continue. <laughs> um, I think, actually... Yeah, look at the thrust override is on. Oh, this it's weird. So really the the right way to the right way to solve this, I think at some point is to turn all the thrusters off. Um because I think I think the thrusters being on kind of messed with it coming back down. Um as you saw with the with the parachute snafu. Um but there's also this issue of uh, yeah, the timer blocks are just kind of going crazy because they are they're just constantly being triggered by this one event controller that's that's uh, looking to see if we are uh, moving at a zero velocity, which because we're not, like, because this isn't mounted to anything, it's going to continue changing from zero to some very small number and then back to zero again. So it's continuing, continuously triggering it. Anyway, um, that's the, uh, that's the video. Um, hopefully that explains some things and helps you kind of uh, get into the the autonomous aspect of this game, which I think is really fun, because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. And look, we can see our satellite that we put up there, 40 kilometers away. Um, and uh, yeah, if I was if I was playing this game in like survival mode, I'd put some sort of antenna on this or a beacon, um, some way that I can see it from really far away. And then once it lands back to the planet, I'll drive a truck over and pick it up. I think that would be uh, a fun gameplay loop. Yep, there it goes. So <laughs> it's going to continue setting this override until uh, until it just fires itself off and off a mountain. Um, so yeah, one adjustment I would do is I would make it so that either, either one of two things. One is you can make it so that the um, just like the way that we made the event controllers turn on at a certain point in the in the sequence, we can also make them turn off again. And we can actually make it so that the timer block that they turn on turns them off. That's one way of doing it. Um, the other way of doing it is we can make it so that one of these, you know, like the timer block that engages the um, parachutes turns off all the thrusters that way there's no there's no concern with the with the uh, with the thrusters turning back on again I think I think I think really the right move is turning off the event controllers turning them off turning it turning the event controllers on when you need them and then turning them off after you're done with them all right that's the video Thanks.